All right, so this is a quick review of Lesson 1, Module 2, Lesson 1. And the objective was we will be able to multiply multi-digit whole numbers and multiples of 10 using place value patterns and the distributive and associative properties. So let's take a look at this. We know that when we have these numbers, and we came up with the saying that we were going to use the bad numbers versus the bougie numbers. Our base 10 numbers, we, we call them bougie. They want to be by themselves. They're special. So our base 10 numbers, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and a million. All of these numbers are special. They are in a category of their own. They're base 10 units. So what we want to do is take our two factors. We have 1,900 which is 1,900, and two tens, which is 20. We're going to take those and break those down. Let's go ahead and break down 1,900 to 19 times 100. Remember, 1,900 can be said, or 1,900 can be said as 1,900. Same thing. Now we're going to take our 20 and break it down into 2 times 10. Now remember, we have a multiplication sign in here between these two as well. So with all of these factors, now we turned our two factors into four factors. Now we want to get our quote unquote bad numbers, not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good. Our factors that are normal numbers are 19 and our two. We're going to get over here by ourselves, by themselves, and then we're going to get our 10 times 100 over here. All right, now we're just going to do the math. 19 times 2. 9 times 2 is 18. I'm going to regroup my 1. 2 times 10 is 20, plus my 110 that I regroup is 38 times. Now, this is 10 times 100, or 100 times 10. On the place value chart, the very next place value to 100 is 1,000. Another shortcut is to count our zeros. I know I have 1, 2, 3 zeros. I'm going to have 3 zeros here. Now, multiplying. Boys and girls, the best way to do this is to multiply your numbers, your whole numbers, and then take your zeros. I know that 38 times 1,000 is going to be 38,000. So what I did was I took that 38 and that 1, and I multiplied. 38 times 1 is 38, and then I counted my zeros. 1, 2, 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3. That's my answer. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, quickly do the next one. All right, so moving on to B. Now we have 6,000 times 50. Same thing, same situation here. We're going to go ahead and isolate our main numbers here, 6 and our 5. So we're going to say, I'm going to skip this step here. I'm not going to do this step. I want to say 6. Let's go ahead and put it here. 6 times 5, and that was 6,000. So that's going to be times 1,000. And that was 5 tens or 50 times 10. And that's going to give us 6 times 5 is 30. Now, this is where it gets tricky. You always want to make sure you've factored out your numbers here properly. So we have 30 times 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. Now, a lot of people were doing one, two, three zeros plus one is four zeros. That's not the case here because remember, we already have a zero in our first factor over here. We have our 30, and now we have to add one, two, three, four zeros. Okay, close those off, and we get 300,000. It's a big difference between 300,000 and 30,000. Make sure you're doing that uh, correctly. All right, moving on to C. You have 250 can be broken down as 25 tens. 25 tens and 300 can be broken down as three hundreds. Let's change our color here. Three hundreds. Now, when we uh, multiply our main numbers versus our base 10 numbers, we're going to see exactly how we come up with that information here. So let's put that. So we have 25 times 3. And then we have, put those in parentheses, 10 times 100. 
All right, we'll put those in parentheses as well. 25 times 3 is 75. 10 times 100 is 1,000. We have 75,000. Count my zeros. All right, so now it says explain how knowing 50 times 4 is equal to 200 helps you find 500 times 400. All right, so it didn't ask you to solve. It asked you to explain how this problem here, this equation, can help you with this expression. So, like I said in class, what I would do is I would talk about how both numbers have 5 and a 4. 5 and a 4. And if you know that 5 times 4 is 20, you can solve either one of these problems. We know that this 5 was 5 times 4, and then it also had a 10 in it because it was 5 tens. You just factored out that um, B50. And this problem over here is the same thing, 5 times 4 equals 20, but instead of having a 10 in it, it had two hundreds. So it was 5 hundreds, 5 times 100, and then 4 times 100. So that way now we know that 5 times 4 is still 20 for these two. And then 100 times 100 would be 10,000. And that's how you could talk about how you came up with your answer. You know that it's 20 times 10. I'm just going to write equals here. It's 20 times 10 is 200. And then 20 times 10,000, oh, excuse me. Count my zeros, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 200,000. All right, so that's the problem set for our lesson one. And hopefully everybody was able to fully understand that and be ready for the mid-module assessment.